Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices for Muslims by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'as. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, I said salam to you, and you've given me a jawab. And we know that it is wajib to return the jawab of, of the salam. So, when I'm in salah, and if someone is to say salam to me, do I have to reply to that salam? A'udhu billah, as-sami'an alim in ash-shaytan al-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad. Let me initially begin from the two main sources of the Islamic uh, teachings, and that is the Qur'an and Hadith. With regard to the importance of uh, greeting with Salamun Alaikum, Qal um, Imam Al Hussein ibn Ali alayhim as Salam, Lis Salam Sabuna Hassana, Tisun was a tune limuptede, or a hedutun lerad. Saying Salam for the one who begins the Salam, he gains sixty nine Hassana. So the one who starts, initiates the salam, will gain 69 hasana. Tis'un wa sittun. Wa wahidatun lirrad. And the one who says alaykum as salam, he responds the salam, he replies the salam, he gains only one hasana. And we have two, at least two verses from the Quran, which mentions this uh, phrase, salamun alaykum. Uh, in the Holy Quran, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ If those who believe uh, in our uh, revelation, they come to you, say to them, Salamun alaykum. Sorry. Also, in the Holy Quran, another verse, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fina'ma aqba dar and other verses with this regard, with the phrase of Salamun Alaikum. Now, Islam emphasizes on uh, saying Salam. And of course, saying Salam is mustahab for the one to commence or you know, initiates the Salam. That's mustahab. But if the one who is in the other side must reply to the Salam, it's a wajib yes. to reply, as you mentioned in the beginning. And we have also mentioned in the Risala of the Sayyid Hafizahullah that um, the emphasis for the rider, let's say you're riding the car, or even um, let's say a horse in, in the old, old days or the camel, uh, to say salam to the walker. Yes. So you're on the bike uh, in your car, for example, to say salam when somebody's walking. Uh, also, um, the one who is standing to say salam to the sitting one, um, and the younger to the elder. And um, if the salam was mentioned and said to a group of people, so let's say you enter into the mosque mm -hmm. of Husseiniyah, and the group sitting and let's say do, reading dua, talking, you say salam alaikum to them, it is wajib kifai, as the Sayyid says that he gets reply, either by all or even by one. Mm -hmm. That would be sufficient. If one said salam from the group, that would be sufficient. And this means that uh, the importance of such greeting, which is the Ahlul Jannah's greeting, salamun alaykum tabtum, enter into the paradise, yes. with this uh, uh, greeting, which means peace be upon you. So it's important uh, greeting, we should inshallah preserve it and observe it and implement it in society. And in the hadith we have ifsha'u salam to spread salam everywhere. Okay, so this is one of the important, Allah, exactly, very important. Emphasis on spreading salam and, and exactly. speaking to exactly. your, your brother, brotherhood and sisterhood in, in, uh, in Islam. Exactly. So in the salah, Shaykhna, 
if someone is to say to me, Salaamu Alaikum, should I respond, should I reply to it? The Sayyid says that it is mandatory for the one, for the Musalli who is praying, um, to reply mm -hmm. in Salah uh, to the one who says Salaam to him. And to say the same words. If he said Salaamu Alaikum, you say Salaamu Alaikum, the same words. Yes. So it's wajib for you to respond back um, in Salah and it will not cause the Salah to be invalid or void. That is an exception. And see how far Islam is, uh, went to, to uh, stage that, that this Salaam, if said even inside the Salah, it will be a wajib and obligatory for the Musalli to reply back in Salah. And we mentioned that um, um, uh, in Salah we have um, Dua and Quran and Dhikr and so forth. You can't bring something extra, but mm -hmm. Salaamun Alaikum is part of the Quran. As, as you've been, been saying, Salaamun Alaikum yes. is part, like, it's part of the Ayah, for example. Yes. So that is the exception where you can say it in Salah. So that's fine. Shaykhna, what if, what if I'm in Salah, someone said Salaamu Alaikum to me and I choose not to respond to the Salah. I say, no, I'm not going to give the job, I'm going to carry on with my Salah and focus Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. My Salah, is that still Sahih or la? If the praying person or the Musalli does not reply to the one who said Salaam to him while he was praying, in this case, this person committed disobedience and sin. That is a ma'asiyah. Can you see how far yes. we've gone? So it becomes a ma'asiyah and sin because you haven't responded to that person while you're in salah to say salam alaikum, to reply back. However, the salah will be valid and not batil. The salah will be uh, valid and accepted. Uh, it's just that you committed a sin. And if you say astaghfar, astaghfirullah, rabbi, it should be, should be sufficient, inshallah, to, to, to erase this sin afterwards. Ahsan, Shaykhna, mashallah. Shaykhna, as you know, we have a, a lot of mischievous brothers in our community. And, uh, you know, when you're praying salah, sometimes they'll come and, and try to speak to you and, and try to put you off. And also, uh, jokingly, they will say, salamu alaykum to you. In that situation, do I have to respond to, to uh, that salam? In such cases, um, I mean, even outside the Salah, if they keep saying Salam, 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 jokingly, it's not mandatory and wajib to reply back. However, inside the Salah, while you're praying, <clears throat> unless you want one of your friends or, you know, siblings, you know, they try to, uh, you know, mock or have some joke with this regard, and they start to say Salam many times, it is, the Sayyid says, it is not permissible to reply to him or to her if performing Salah. In other words, okay. you cannot, you're not allowed to uh, reply the Salah. You have to ignore. Exactly. You have to ignore that person. You can't reply because it's not a, a genuine Salam, a greeting. Ascent, ascent. Shaykh, no, we discussed in uh, the previous episode, you know, things that uh, invalidate the Salah. Are there any other things that invalidate the Salah? Um, yes, next one is to deliberately and intentionally laugh loudly and audibly. This will cause the salah to be batal. So laughing loudly is one of these mutalat of salah um, unless it was done unintentionally. You know, sometimes you're out of control and you start laughing. In this case, the salah is valid. But intentionally, if you start laughing, um, in, in this case, the salah will be batil. And um, especially if, if you lose the, uh, the posture, the state and the posture mm -hmm. of the salah. Uh, in a way that they would say to you, you're not praying, you're just, you're just laughing, having a, 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 fun, a fun time, you know. So in this case, the salah will be uh, batil and you have to redo the salah again. Um, also, um, next one is to the opposite, to cry deliberately, again. To cry because you lost your money, uh, you've got somebody, a loved one, you've lost. Yeah, it happens and, a lot and at you, funerals. You, you pray in, in Salah, mm -hmm. you pray 
and you cry in salah for losing that loved one, for example, again, the salah will be batil. Yes. Unless you pray uh, for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you fear Allah, yes. the day of judgment, resurrection day, you know, the hellfire. I mean, we, 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 we've seen a lot of recordings of those who recite Quran, uh, you know, and they start to cry while they're reading the Quran. Uh, surely if, if you were to read such a surah, you know, in, in your salah, uh, then it will be okay if, if you were crying out of the love or out of the compassion or out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the Sayyid says, and this is in, is in fact amongst the best of deeds. Oh, wow. The Sayyid mentions this Mashallah. clearly that crying in salah is one of the best deeds in salah. Mashallah. That you cry. You have reached the peak of ibadah, the peak of yes. um, adoration the peak of devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we try not to cry on worldly things, dunyawi things, money, house, you know, things we've lost. No, we cry only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salah. Um, the next one um, is doing something that also uh, modifies the state of in the posture of salah. Let's say clapping too much, you okay. clap, or jumping, or jogging. All these acts will make the salah batil. Yes. So as I've mentioned previously that one of the conditions of salah is to be stationary and motionless. You have to yes. stand still, upright, and uh, perform the salah. Without this um, invalidated of salah, in which you can fulfill the wajib to the end as best as you can. Shaykh, you mentioned that you know laughing or making too much noise, uh, you know, will make the salah batil. Lakin, what about you know the opposite? What if you are too silent? If someone remains silent for too long in salah, does that make the salah batil? Again, we go back to the um, the issue of posture of the salah. Mm -hmm. If you kept too silent, and in a way that people will say to you, "Well, you're not praying." The posture has changed. The state of salah has changed. Now you're just keeping quiet, pondering, you know, reflecting. They won't say that he, you're praying. In this case, if you were um, too long, uh, quiet and silent, the salah, of course, will be bottled as well and void, and you have to repeat it again. Shaykhna, what uh, about eating and drinking in salah? I mean, surely if I had some chewing gum, um, am I allowed to pray with this chewing gum in my mouth? Again, if they look at you and say that um, you're eating or drinking, that will, of course, uh, render the salah batil and void. Um, we're not allowed to eat or drink in salah at all. It is uh, the time of ibadah, the time of uh, that we praise Allah, ask Allah, seek Allah's forgiveness, and uh, we can't really engage in, other, in no other acts of dunya. However, if somebody had a bit of food between his teeth, for example, or just a bit of food left over, they can swallow it, that's fine, just to swallow it. But to actually eat, uh, let's say, a morsel of, of uh, let's say, bread and cheese, yes. or to drink a uh, half cup of water or, or tea, let's say, or a coffee, that will change the posture of salah and the state and cause the salah to be bottled and void. Ahsan. Uh, Shaykhna, what does one do if he has doubts in his prayer? Again, the 11th uh, um, invalidator of Salah uh, is when you have the doubts, not in every segment of Salah. We have, inshallah, full details about the doubts, the accepted doubts and the bottled doubts. Now, this is one of the bottled doubts in which the Salah will be void and batil. You'd have to repeat it. Exactly. And that is when you have the doubts between the first two raka'ah of salah. Okay. Between the first and second. Whether you're in the first raka'ah or you're in the second raka'ah. Exactly. Also to have doubts in salat al-subh, let's say, between okay. the raka'at, not uh -huh. between the same raka'ah. Yes. Did I forget ruku' or sujood? No, no. Between the first and the second raka'ah. Is this my okay. And the maghrib, which is three. Three uh -huh. raka'ah. Yes. Again, to have such um, um, doubts and shak between these uh, raka'at will render the salah uh, void and bathroom. So we have to be careful. And repeat. 
exactly. And also say it mentions here to add or deduct a rukun or a fundamental or a key yeah. element aspect of the salah, um, be it deliberate or unintentional. The rukun is the key element. If you forget the ruku', either you forget and you remember afterwards, <coughs> or you deliberately left the ruku', yes. ignored it. In both cases, the rukun, the key element, will make the salah batal and void. That's important. Other than these other rukun, hukum uh, is different. If you forget them, that's fine. You can do them later. You know, let, let's say <coughs> you forget the tashahud. You do it afterwards when you finish the salah. Um, if you forget alhamdan surah, that's, one, that's fine. If you're in a ruku' sujood, you just keep going carry on, yeah. and carry on the salah. You don't have to go back and do, do them and so forth. But the rukun, the key elements are important. Mm -hmm. That if we uh, ignore them, forget them, deliberate, intentional, unintentional, the salah will be in both cases batil. Mashallah, Shaykh. Shaykh, no, but what if, um, what if I doubt that I've done something wrong or not? I'm not sure that, oh, did I do it properly? Did I not do it properly? Do I have to repeat my salah? Is that after salah? Yes. When you finished? Yes. When you finish the salah and you have doubt about any wrong parts you've you know, performed the salah or did I do this or not? Because you have finished the salah, there's a qa'idah and basis in, in fiqh which is called qa'idah al-faragh. The qa'idah, the basis of uh, after the ending of salah yes. or the act. You have ended the act. Yes. Or now outside the act. Because you have just ended the act, khalas, you just ignore your uh, shak and, and doubt and you uh, continue with your dhikr or the next salah or you just uh, finish your salah and that's it, that's fine. MashaAllah, well, what a great religion. We, we, we don't look back, we keep going forward. We keep going forward, MashaAllah. Shaykh Lal, thank you very much uh, for today and thank you to all the viewers for joining us on Ahkam SOS. InshaAllah, we'll be seeing you next time here on Imam Hussain TV3. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh, <laughs>